Namaste everybody. My name is Yogi Vivek Rawat and I am your pranayama teacher. We are going to learn the pranayama techniques, the different breathing techniques in pranayama sessions. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn new things. Namaste. Namaste everybody. Welcome back to the pranayama sessions and we are going to start today's session we are again with the chanting of universal mantra om. So let's sit comfortably and chant together with me. So close your eyes, keep your spine nice aligned, keep your entire body relaxed, keep your mind relaxed as well. Do not do any kind of you know chattering. Join your palms together. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Again, inhale. Om. 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 Rub your palms, create a positive energy, gently place your palms on your eyes, receive the soothing energy through your heart, release your arms down, gently open your eyes. So today we have got a different, another technique of pranayama. So this is named as Brahmari which is also known as humming bee breath. So you might have seen a black color bee, which just keeps on wandering around the fields, around the flowers to take the juice of the flowers. And then it creates, it keeps on, you know, resonating the sound of um, a unique sound, which we need to produce while performing this technique. So the sound, you know, generally resembles a kind of, Om, but with the closed mouth. So we are kind of, you know, going to chant this Om sound or hum sound inside of, while keeping our mouth closed. So it has got so many benefits for those people who, who just cannot focus on one thing, who have a lack of concentration, who have a lot of, you know, anger issues get angry very easily. This is a very good technique for them. Uh, it improves the focus, concentration. It releases any kind of cerebral tension due to a lot of stress, due to a lot of tension. We generally keep on having those kind of, you know, tensions and it just generates, it releases those sort of tensions. It activates the parasympathetic nervous system which is responsible for rest and digest mode and it helps you to just concentrate properly and while having any kind of meal it is very important to have this system activated so that you can uh, get the benefits of whatever you're eating whatever you're stuffing inside your body so this is the nervous system parasympathetic which is responsible for rest and digest mode it improves your sleeping quality as well it strengthens your vocal cords so that like um, if you want to just strengthen your vocal cords it is quite good practice now the contraindications if you have any kind of ear infections then you have to be very very careful and do not try this while lying position because the kind of vibration it produces while we practice it it may be like not instantly, but if we keep on performing daily, so it this vibration can be kind of too much for us. So that's why we don't perform it while lying down. Um, sometimes, you know, it can be very uncomfortable for a lot of people. So while sitting down in Padmasana, in um, Swastikasana, in these postures, Vajrasana, in these postures, it, it can be performed. 
So to perform it, there is a mudra, there is a gesture of uh, which is known as Shanmukhi mudra, and it means closing the seven gates of seven senses. Um, these all like eyes, your nose, your both ears, your mouth. These are all seven total. Um, and closing to control these senses so that you can not get distracted while practicing. It is quite important since it is about you perform it with the closed eyes. You can even perform it with the open eyes. But since you already know that there are a lot of things which can distract us from like our practice. So it is very important to do it with the closed eyes first. And then slowly, slowly when you master that, you move ahead. And then you can do that with the open eyes later on. So how the Sanmukhi Mudra is, through your palms, through your fingers, you're going to place your fingers on your face. How? With your thumb, you're going to close your flap of the ears. With your index finger, middle finger, your ring finger, you're going to close your eyes and nose. But you're not going to close your nose. You're not going to press it. Um, you can slightly press it, but make sure that still you are able to breathe in, breathe out. In that way, what happens? In that way, you control the vibration, the powerful vibration. Uh, sometimes this vibration is hard to control for some people. They feel like some kind of psychic issues. Then you can press the nostril slight, like with your ring finger, very slightly. But still, you are able to breathe in, breathe out. Just when you are like breathing out with the sound, you are doing this with the control. You are also, you can also do one thing. You can place your tip of the tongue against your roof so that it is also controlling that powerful vibration some people maybe it is easy like when they perform it um, five to ten times means less times then it, it may be easy but if you are performing it a lot of times and daily so for some people it can be like very high vibrations so at that time for that they can do this trick like pressing the nostril slightly and tipping uh, tip of the tongue against the roof while producing this vibration right so bending your both elbows placing your fingertips or fingers over your eyes closing the flap of your ears with the thumb and then from here on you can firstly you can firstly exhale so that you are emptying your lungs then you can take a deep inhale so that you can create a space for long chanting so that you can perform it in a lengthy way so as you inhale you're going to inhale deeply and as you exhale So in that way, you can perform it. But the thing is, if you're not going to increase the length of your breathing, it is going to hard to exhale also for a long, you know, in a lengthy way. And if you cannot do that, then this vibration would be very short and it would not have that impact on your mind, on your practice. So it is important that you are firstly breathing in, in a long way. Then you are slowly slowly stretching it so try to make your exhalation slight longer and try to stretch it for a long way um, if you are not comfortable with that like if you are exaggerating that you can like make it a slight short if you're not comfortable with that you know long exhalation that is okay but the thing is again i keep on saying that comfort should be there while performing pranayama if you're not comfortable try not to push yourself beyond anything beyond the line so this is it now from here like some people what kind of mistakes they commit the common mistakes when they place their palms like on their eyes so they sometimes uh, bring their elbows like too much closer and they are like this so ke keeping your spine rounded is not beneficial keep your spine straight and keep your chest nicely open but why not try not to like again exaggerate that some people like do this kind of thing so they are like overextending their spine that is also not good 
Lifting the shoulders up is also very common for the practitioners, but that is also not a good idea. If you are lifting your shoulders up, you're not comfortable. Your muscles are getting contracted around the neck. Again, you are like suppressing, you're compressing the muscles there and you're trying to, uh, like you are unnecessarily disturbing the pattern, the flow of your prana, flow of your blood as well. So it is important to be aware of these small things. Now you can do it like five to seven times in the beginning. Um, it's okay. Like it can give you so many benefits if you perform it like daily or like if you can perform it twice in one day, uh, twice every day, like in the, in the early morning and around the evening as well. Even before the sleeping, you can perform it. It will improve your sleep quality as well. So some people who have this kind of habit to wake up late in the morning, they can perform it. It is quite beneficial. Of course, like these kind of techniques and in yoga, you can you, you don't just get the benefits instantly. You also have to give time to those practices. You have to show your consistency, so your faith towards the practice. And then slowly, slowly, like gradually, you feel the difference, definitely. So this is about it. You can perform it like five to seven times. After that, you can release the arms down and activating chin mudra, or placing your palms just on your knees, whichever is comfortable for you. Again, you can keep on chanting. And then after that, do not just open your eyes. Just be there for a while. Try to feel the benefits of that, you know, vibrations of that, those chantings of hum. And then you will feel a different like state of calmness and try to enjoy that moment. Try to enjoy that feeling rather than just opening your eyes and then getting here and there. That is not a correct procedure. So after finishing it, just stay for a moment and very slowly you can like either finish the pranayama session. You can do it like towards the end of the pranayama session so that you are bringing a kind of counterbalance to your pranayama. You did something like vitalizing. So you are like your energy is quite high towards the end of the practice. This one or like Shitali or Shitkari, which we are going to discuss about. This pranama you can practice towards the end of the session. So you are making a flow, right? So it will just keep you calm, which is the ultimate goal of yoga. To stay calm, to stay just uh, the, like the gentleness, the smoothness and the state of calmness. So this is about it. Slowly, slowly, you can increase the round as well. Five, seven, ten. But, you know, like after seven to eight, like if you are doing it properly, your shoulders tend to get tired because you are bending your elbow. For some people who, who don't have like open shoulders, they may find it struggle. And if they like roll their shoulders forward, then their spine is not straight. So in that way, you can just practice it for a, like less rounds, even like five to seven rounds are enough for daily. So that's about it. Practice this beautiful technique of pranayama and definitely see and feel and observe the difference, the beautiful differences, positive differences, um, positive changes in your lives. Uh, whatever kind of problems you have, just try to get rid out, uh, get rid out of those problems with these beautiful, magnificent techniques of pranayama. So that's about it. Um, again, let's sit together and chant Om three times for closing the session. Join your palms together. Inhale. Om. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Rub your palms together once again. Place the palms on your eyes. 
slowly slowly take your palms away softly open your eyes so i hope it is informative it is beneficial for you and you just take it as a positive way see you in the next session until then namaste